Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do a kind of a review on the Missions Gold or Magello's Mission Gold watercolors. I got the 7 milliliter 24 colors. I have been wanting these watercolors for so long um, and I decided to buy them um, a while ago. I've been I wanted to do an unboxing when I first got them but I was just so excited. I ripped it open and I think somewhere around here I have like a clip of when I was putting them like pouring them into their pans um, but my camera died so I just finished it and have been using them and today I just decided that I want to share them with you guys. So when you open the box, my box from shipping came like this. It was all dented. Um, it didn't come in a box. It actually came in a bag from Amazon. So I'm guessing that's why mine came like kind of the box came damaged because it was not packaged in a box. So when you open it, it has on the back of the lid all the colors that it comes with. It has their five keywords in like a bunch of different languages. It came with the five keywords in English and all of their 126 colors. Um, they even have like opaque and I believe some of these look really nice that I want to get eventually. Um, and they also have tips on how to mix their colors, a chart on light fastness, transparency, staining, and a color index on what, you know, PW is pigment white, PG is pigment green. So that's what that's in there. And then it comes with this little like blue cloth, which is so cute. And these are the watercolors. They do have, I think, a set of their pure pigment set, which have like the really fat ones. But like I said, mine's only seven milliliters, so they're pretty, pretty small. But you can see how much I've used. And I still have a bunch left. So I actually poured it into two palettes. Um, so, yeah. So just a quick run through of all the colors. It comes with Chinese white, lemon yellow, permanent yellow deep, yellow orange, permanent red, cordacodone rose, rose matter, a bright opera, which is like this beautiful pink, uh, bright clear violet, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, peacock blue, Ultramarine, Deep Blue, Indigo, Viridian, Hooker's Green, Sap Green, Yellow Ochre, Raw Sienna, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Red Brown, Van Dyke Brown, and Ivory Black. So let me show you the two palettes I poured these paints into. So the first one I poured the paint into is this Master Touch Fine Art Studio palette. This is what I use as my studio palette. Let me just open this. It is really huge and cumbersome, so I use it only at home. I don't use I don't take this with me anywhere. So I poured small little dots of my Missions Gold paints in here and then I believe three of these this yellow and like two more colors are Daniel Smith, but all the rest of them are uh, Magello's paints. So I poured these little dots in here just so I can use at home. And the other palette I poured it into, when I ordered those colors, I or also ordered this Meaden watercolor tin. Um, it's actually pink. I put donut stickers on it. This one's like coming off just because I thought it would make it look super cute. Let me just open this up. Oops. And so in here I have my uh, silver black velvet uh, number eight round 
travel brush which goes like this and it is awesome I bought this on Amazon as well just because I wanted a travel brush to go into this um, let me just close it pan set ignore these three colors in the middle these are actual gen Ugh. these are actually Daniel Smith colors that I have in here um, just because I wanted it to be in the same palette so when I travel I have all my professionals colors so only the ones in the pans right here are um, Magello actually I think let me take that back this one and this one are Windsor and Newton's Quadacridone Red and Gold Ochre. So let's just take these out so I don't end up getting confused. So there we go. This is the Magello set. It's just that for some reason my colors don't want to stay in their little assigned seats. And you have like enough for another pan. So really it's like a 26 pan set. Um, so I have all the colors here. I poured them and they did shrink as they dried. It took a couple days for them to dry. Some of them are still like, this one is still kind of tacky. A lot of them have like this tacky feeling to it. The only ones that didn't is, if I can get it out. This is W545 and it is actually like chalky it has like a chalky kind of feeling as well as this yellow but all the rest of them are still kind of tacky to the touch but all of them re-wet beautifully i usually end up using just a bottle that i got at walmart to spray and re-wet them and they re-wet amazing so i am going to use these in a painting and that's like a quick sketch to show you guys like how these colors work but so far I've been using them for a while and I'm in love with them I I don't even have words to say <laughs> but they're amazing watercolors I know other colors in the pan sometimes crack or chip and I had that problem with a lot of beginner watercolors but these ones do not crack or chip and they because they are still kind of tacky, they just re-wet amazingly. Um, so let's start with a sketch. So I wanted to quickly talk about um, the watercolor sketch that I'm doing and kind of explain uh, my process. So I don't normally do portraits in watercolor. I love sketching portraits, but I don't like painting them. So this was kind of my first uh, real attempt at drawing and painting someone. Um, it took a lot of patience. I'm using my uh, silver black velvet travel brush and I did this sketch kind of um, in my sketchbook. I did like a mini series of uh, my crown babes, which is basically like these beautiful women that have different types of crowns and I kind of did them for a while so I kind of wanted to go back to that and do one in watercolor and so that was really the inspiration. Um, I went on Pinterest, found this model and then I looked up different crowns and I was really inspired by this like gem um, crystal crown so that's what I did on top. Um, you'll see me going like back and forth. You'll also see my head <laughs> popping in and out. I did not know my face was popping in and out. Um, but I was just trying to get real close to details. Um, with watercolors, I started off with the lightest and then worked my way to the darkest. With the Magellos, I found it a lot easier to um, blend skin tones. Just because I feel like they're very movable on the paper. And because they're so transparent, I was able to do multiple layers and have like her rosy cheeks kind of pull through. <clears throat> Sorry. So I basically just went back and forth um, 
you know, trying to fix things, keep the lights light, go darker. And later on, you'll see me using my uh, Polychromos Faber-Castell pencils. Um, I like those ones when doing watercolor paintings a lot more than my Prismacolor, just because um, I feel like they're creamier. I do recommend though to do everything in watercolor first and then go to color pencils just because color pencils leave a waxy residue on the paper. So if you work back and forth between the two, the water will not go onto the paper due to the wax. I mainly did it just to bring out the details in the eyes and then add some structure to the nose and lips. Um, I did accidentally get some of her hair on her face, which I was not able to fix, so that's why one side of her cheek is kind of lopsided, my bad. Um, but overall, I really, really like these watercolors. Um, right now, they're like my go-to favorites. Before that, I used the Winsor Newton Cotman set and the Prima Tropical set, so this is like a step up and I'm super excited. Um, but yeah, that's basically all I did for this video. If you guys like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe for future videos. And if you want to see the full uh, version of this video without the speed, the time lapse, there we go. Um, sign up for my Patreon because I do post like the full times on my Patreon.